Hey everyone, this is Dave, aka DREBG, senior member over at informtrades.com. If you haven't been to Inform Trades, I encourage you to go over and poke around for a little while. I'm sure you're going to find tons of things that you can learn from and maybe even become a member and contribute. Uh, today is uh, April 6th and it's 11.15 at night and you're looking at the Euro Yen pair on the daily chart. Uh, some of you may have seen my other video, a uh, couple of videos on supply and demand. And we're going to look tonight to see how it is that you go about marking up a chart to identify those supply and demand areas and maybe take a trade. First thing we're going to do is going to take a look at where price action went screaming away from some area. And you can probably see that that's right about here, obviously. And it encompasses a few candles. I'm going to draw that area encompassing these candles right here and assume that that's going to be a representative of our supply area. Now, as you can see, it gets down to the point where uh, it starts to consolidate. And the next thing we need to mark is where we think the demand area is. Well, originally it started to move from this area here. And it broke a little bit of that area and went lower. So I think we're going to take this into consideration as far as where I think the demand area is located. So now that we have that marked, we see that price action went screaming away from supply. This is another pretty big area because we can see this gigantic candle here. Uh, this would be a sub-level, while well, I'm thinking of it, this would be a sub-level uh, of demand, or supply, I mean. But as you can see, I, did, I didn't draw this in on purpose because this uh, demand area, sorry, this supply area has been breached. Uh, it's no longer uh, a supply area if it's uh, been breached. So we don't even have to put that in there any longer because it's not valid. Uh, but anyway, uh, you can see this big long candle. Uh, one would think that that would be a pretty good um, level of supply, but indeed it went and blew right through it. So what I'm expecting here is uh, this W pattern that we're seeing. One line, middle, down again, and then up again, ending up somewhere around here uh, in our supply area uh, after reaching this demand area. So if we think that is the case, and then we look at some candle charts and patterns, we start to see a couple of things. Number one is this blue line is the 21 EMA, and I'm a big fan of the 21, and you can see we've uh, closed above it uh, quite a bit, even retraced back to it, uh, and we've stayed a little bit below the 200 EMA, which is here. Um, I'm expecting this to uh, climb above the 200, bounce a little bit, and then get back to here. This is back in September of 09. This is back uh, to today, April 6th, April 7th. And we have these big move down. And if we draw some fibs on here, just from this most recent big move, you'll see that we're in a level that would be a good place to uh, look to go long. And that return to the 382 here, maybe a return to the 50, uh, are both good areas uh, that we could use to um, take a long position. And if you see, uh, our, even our FIB targets uh, end up somewhere up here in the supply area. Um, so what I really like about this is that this level seems to have been broken. And you see this level here? We have a hit here, 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 and it's finally been broken and retested. Um, I like to think of this as the, the part of the W that's in the middle that's now passed. And that we, if we do retest again, it probably will be somewhere uh, here and not much lower than that before we head back up to here. Now again, this is speculative and it's going to take quite a while. Uh, after all, uh, this was the middle of January where this started. Um, so uh, it didn't get down to the bottom of demand until uh, mid-February. And we're talking about some pretty big uh, uh, swings here. So for instance, price action is here right now. Uh, if we assume it gets up to here, we're looking at it, you know, six, seven hundred pips. I'm going to call it seven hundred if we get right in the middle. and uh, if we want to get, let's say, under this swing here, uh, we're probably at 500 pips back. So, you know, you, you, there's still a good one to one and a half uh, risk to reward here, uh, but it's a much longer trade than I'm used to. Um, but the pattern is still there. It's just on a much larger time frame. If we keep moving down the charts to, to even a 15-minute chart and try and pinpoint where we might want to get in, uh, I would do the same here where we just run a quick, quick study on this most recent swing low and swing high 
And you see here, that gets us somewhere around the 75 level. So now we have where we think we want to get long. And we can put in uh, our stop loss uh, and our target and make sure our money management is in order uh, and really kind of pinpoint this trade uh, down to where we want it to be. So if we measure this, you'll see that we're waiting for a limit order uh, here to be filled. Uh, it's uh, maybe 25 pips away or so right now. Uh, we are uh, 700 pips uh, up is our target and 500 pips down is our stop loss. So uh, risk to reward is well within parameters. Uh, we have uh, breached this level here uh, and have bounced off this demand area and uh, we've even come back to retest. Uh, so I feel pretty good about uh, our being able to reach this level. Uh, but it could take quite a bit of time and uh, it's probably going to man manage itself uh, I would say at least over you know two three weeks so um, I hope you get something out of that and um, we'll go from there thanks